Hello. Welcome to NPTEL NOC introductory course on point set topology part two. So module twelve, we continue with the study of paracompact spaces. This time, partition of unity. So we shall now discuss one of the most important property of paracompact spaces, namely that they admit a large number of continuous real valued functions. As usual, we shall begin with a definition. Take any topological space by a partition of unity on X. The continuity is assumed, so I have put it in the bracket. Partition of unity on X, we mean a family of functions indexed by I. Okay. All these functions are defined in the whole of X to the closed interval 0, 1. The first property is for every X. You have a neighborhood UX of X such that theta i is 0 on all y belonging to UX except for finitely many i inside i. Theta i will be 0 on this UX in that neighborhood. So that is like saying that the family is locally finite. Theta i is the is a member uh, members of these continuous family, continuous functions. They will all vanish except for finitely many of these theta i's. Since there are only finitely many of them which are valid, which are non-zero, their sum makes sense. Even if I write this total sum estimation theta i i theta i, this will be a finite sum for each x. That sum must be equal to 1. So this is the second condition. The second condition gives the name partition of unity. This unity is the constant function 1 here. It is broken up into a family of functions, each of them continuous, sum total is equal to 1. The sum arbitrary continuous arbitrary family is this. So what the meaning of sum? That is why this local finiteness is there. Actually, point finiteness gives you this condition. This uh, makes the, makes this condition sensible. Okay, but you will see that local finiteness is important here. Instead of arbitrary topological spaces, if I have say subspaces of R n, then I can talk about partition of unity, which are smooth, which are C one, C two, and so on. So you can put those, those adjectives here, uh, C infinity partition of infinity, such things are possible. Because we are studying it on arbitrary topological spaces, there is no notion of differentiability here, that's all. The condition one, we may refer to theta as locally finite. Condition one is the same as saying that family theta i inverse of open 0, closed 1. Take this inverse image. These things are open subsets of x. That family is locally finite, the same thing as condition 1. It follows that at any given point, the LHS of the second sum here, this sum here, is finite sum and hence makes sense. So condition 2 ensures that sum total is equal to 1 means this open cover, this open family must be a cover for x. Okay. Every x must belong to something. If, if, if it is not in any of them, then sum total would have been 0. So that is why this is a cover. Given any open cover uj of x, we say that the family theta, this theta, 
okay is subordinate to uj if these open subsets okay we take this family this must be a refinement of this open this family see this 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 family is indexed by j this is indexed by i okay so indexing sets are different it can be different it can be same so what is the meaning of refinement for each member here there is a member here so that association itself will give you a function on the indexing set so we are not writing all that okay when uh, it is crucial you may have to write down those things also the refinement uh, functions and so on so here is a theorem take a para compact hausdorff or regular space and uj be an open cover for x then there exists a partition of unity on x which is subordinate to uj subordinate to uj i recall that theta i is a partition its support will be contained in one of the uj's theta i inverse of open 0 closed 1 okay actually you can you you will see that its closure itself is a refinement okay the key to this theorem is the following lemma so this is where we are going to use john's lemma also later on so first of all the definition is a family of subsets of x is said to be a point finite if each point of x belongs to at most finitely many members of u so this is what i have already told last time but we repeat it here because it is necessary okay a locally finite family will be automatically fi point finite but here is a definition which is now needed for us to proceed namely this is a new definition take u an open cover for x a refinement v of u is called a shrink of u if v bar that is a refinement of u okay automatically it will be a closed refinement okay so this is what we would like to have just not just an arbitrary refinement so such a thing is called a shrink if the closures of each v inside v bar is a refinement of u if v is contained inside u for each one that that's a ordinary refinement this time we want the closures must closures of this one for each member here must be contained in some member in u so that is a that is called a shrink okay shrinking lemma is something about just a normal space here we don't bring uh, para compactness the para compact hausdorff spaces are normal so some kind of normality is built in there inside para compactness you put hausdorffness it comes out okay so though there are possibilities of proving a result without the shrinking lemma but we will go through this one so that the shrinking property corresponding to normality is brought out separately okay so that is the whole idea of putting this one so let take a normal space u be a point finite cover for each u belonging to u there exists open set u f u such that f u bar contained inside u and the family f u u inside u is a cover for x so if you call this as v then this v bar which in f f u bar they are contained inside u therefore this will be called a shrink you see so that is the whole idea so f u bar so these are this is a shrink of for that one okay the family f u is a cover because in the definition of shrink we are not putting this uh, it must be a cover okay 
So this shrinking lemma tells you that there is a cover which is a shrink of the given given family. Indexing will be the same here. For each u, you have an f u. That f u comes back to you. In fact, f u bar is inside. Okay, the statement must be clear here. But the proof depends upon using John's lemma. So, how do we use John's lemma? We start with a family gamma of pairs V curly V comma G, where V is a subfamily of U and G is a function from V to open subsets inside X. This is tau. Tau is a topology on X. Okay, this is a function now. For each member here, you will get an open subset here with the property that the closures of G of U are contained inside U. So for all U inside this subfamily V. The second thing is all those GU where U is inside V and all those U which are not inside V, they cover the whole of X. Okay. See, if all U, V, if it's V is the whole of U, then this would be a total shrink. Since it is not Total, we have a word here, partial shrink. Okay, this partial, this part is such that GU bar is contained inside you, but we insist upon the rest of them, together with the rest of them, it covers X. So, such things are called partial shrinks. So what we are looking at is, we don't want anything left here, we want the entire function should be defined on the whole of curly u here instead of some subspace v. Okay. So, that is the statement of the lemma. Okay. So, how do we prove it? With this family gamma, we put a partial order. Take v comma f and w comma g. This is less than or equal to that one. We are going to define this relation. If we don't live, the family is a subfamily of this, and the function is a restriction of the function. V is contained inside W, and G restricted to V is F. Why this family is non empty? The answer is using normality, we can see that each singleton U for U belong to U can be taken as a domain for a partial shrink. U and rest of the many members of U, they cover, right? So, if you take the union of all V not equal to U, that is one open set, U is another open set. These two together, they cover the whole of it. Their complements will be disjoint closed sets. With normality, you can take a smart, slightly open subsets containing inside the closure of all these open sets, union of all these open sets that will be contained inside this U and so on. So, you get a partial cover. Okay. So, this is the easy, easy part. Okay. Now, if you have a chain inside gamma. Chain means what? A totally ordered subset. Indexed by some family V alpha, G alpha. Each of them is a partial cover. Remember, they are members of gamma. So, it is a chain. I must show that the chain has an upper bound inside gamma. So, for that, I take W as union of all these V alphas. That will be a subfamily of U. That is fine. But now we want a function W. 
So W to tau defined F restricted to V alpha to be G alpha because this is a total, this is a total uh, order set, it's a chain. If alpha and beta are given, either alpha is less than beta or beta is less than alpha. That is the meaning of total order, right? Once that is the case, G of V alpha will be equal to F of beta. This beta is contained in that alpha. Therefore, this definition makes sense on the whole of F. There is no ambiguity here. Okay. So, we have got a member of, member, it's not yet a member. We have got a family, so family of V and a function. We have to just verify that it is a shrink, a partial shrink. And then it will be a member. Automatically, this will be the upper bound. Because, see, by definition, all V alphas are contained inside W. And when you restrict this capital F to any V alpha, it will be just the corresponding G alpha. Okay. So, we have to show that this is a member of, of this family gamma. For that, you have to show that it is a partial string. Okay. So, property 1 is verified easily. G u bar is contained by very definition here because they are all G alphas. To see 2 is the important thing. Okay, how do you see the part 2? Namely, why all G u, u inside W now and those which are not in W cover the whole of X. Okay. So, to see, we need to use the point finiteness of u. I have no other way to prove this one. Take x belonging to x, okay, belongs to only finitely many of u and u to u n because it's point finite, right? Some u and u to u n, let take a, take finitely many of them, all right, we'll call them u and u to u n. If u i are not in W, okay, one of the UI is not in W, it will be in the, in this part. Therefore, X is there, no problem. It is this part which gives you problem because you have shrunk these things, you have made smaller. So, X may be left out. So, you have to worry about that. So, the problem is, if one of the UIs are inside, not inside W, you are happy. So on the other hand, suppose if UIs are all inside W for all the U and U to N, then it follows that there is a alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha N and so on, for, to which these UIs will belong to V alpha 1, etc. Right? Therefore, you can take the maximum of these alpha is, so there will be one single V alpha to which all of them will belong to. Okay, so this is where that this is a chain is used. By the property to apply it to this alpha, it will follow that X must be in G alpha V for some V inside V alpha because it is not in the other part. That's all. So all that I want to show is that X is covered by these W G of members of uh, U alphas or here. So now we are, they, it is not here, so we have shown that it is in this part. By John's lemma, we have a maximal element. Remember, this, this itself may not be maximal element. This is an upper bound for the chain. There is a maximal element. We don't know what is that maximal element. But that is good enough for us. Okay. So we shall denote it by U prime F. Remember, U prime is a family of U. F is a shrink function. Now it is enough to show that U prime itself is U. 
so that there is nothing left on this part. Okay, this part is not. This, this, these are the things. So there is a total shunt. Okay, that will give you a total shunt. Okay, this maximal element must have the domain, the whole of U. For if U is any member of U, suppose it is not in U prime, then look at this set A, which is union of all F V V inside U prime, and all V such that V is not equal to V. Okay, all those V not equal to U, they are in U minus V prime. If, if this is smaller, then there will be always some such thing, right? It follows that the complement of this is a closed subset of, this is an open subset because this is all, these are all unions of open subset. It's a closed subset of U because the whole thing is covering. U, U is the only one which is missing. Therefore, this set will be a subset of, this complement of this one will be a subset of U. Therefore, there exists an open set which we, which we call FU, such so that AC, this closed set, contained inside FU, contained in FU bar, contained inside U. Normality is used only now. Normality was used to show that gamma is non empty, that's all. So, right in the beginning, right at the end. Now, the function F extends. To U prime union singleton U. All other members we have F, but one more for U you have defined and we have defined it. So now this is a larger member than the member U prime F. That is a contradiction. Why the contradiction? Because we assume that U prime is not U. Okay, so I have already made this remark for relevant things you can read from Munkre's book. That will give you proof of paracompact hostile space. Every open cover has a shrink. No assumption of local finiteness on the cover, local uh, point finiteness on the cover. Okay, but don't confuse it with the statement normality. Just normal space, if you have an open cover, it may not admit a shrink. Okay, yeah. So here is a comment and then we will stop here. The actual proof of this one is now very easy. So first let us go through that proof. We may assume that uj is locally finite, okay, because paracompactness. So start with an open cover, replace it by a locally finite refinement. So you can assume this locally finite and choose a total shrink f uj j belong to j. Okay, because it is normal also. And now this is local finite, so it is point finite. Using normality again, obtain continuous functions alpha j from x to 0, 1, such that the closures of f u j s are taken to singleton 1 and the complement of u j s are taken to 0. This is normality. Whenever you have two disjoint closed subsets, you have such functions there. Since uj is locally finite, it follows that in a suitable neighborhood of any given point, only finitely many alpha j's are non zero. That is because of our local finite family. Therefore, the function alpha, which is summation alpha j, makes sense. Okay, in a small neighborhood of every point, exactly some finitely many of them will be, same finitely many, those things will be left out. 
okay each alpha j is continuous there so in that open set sum is continuous therefore this alpha is a continuous function moreover somewhere it must be equal to 1 right because f u j it will belong to some f u j so alpha j of f u j whole thing is going to 1 so one of the index it will be always 1 and rest of the indexes, it will be either zero or positive, something. Therefore, sum total is always bigger than or equal to one. Okay. Now, all that you have to do is take theta j of x equal to alpha j of x divided out by alpha of x. You have function, continuous function, which is never zero. Therefore, 1 divided by that function is also continuous. So, I am, that is why I am using it. Alpha j over alpha, this will be also continuous. Okay. Now, summation theta j will be summation alpha j divided by alpha x, which is equal to 1. What is the zeros of this? They are the same thing as zeros of this. Therefore, the support of this will be contained inside the corresponding uj's. Whatever support of alpha j is there, same thing will be support of theta j. So the proof of partition of unity finally is very simple. Okay, very easy. So major thing went in proving the shrinking thing here, namely using chance lemma. So here is a comment here, it is easily seen that paracompactness is weakly hereditary, namely every closed subspace of paracompact space is paracompact. Just for the sake of clarity, write it down as an exercise, okay. However, it is not hereditary for the same reason as compactness is not hereditary. Weakly hereditary, yes. Closed subspace is fine. Or ordinary arbitrary subspaces may not be. How to see that? Starting with a non-compact, non-paracompact space, if there is one, we will show that there is such things. You can always add an extra point. Take the serpentification SX to get a compact space which is then paracompact as well. Okay. We shall discuss an example of a non-paracompact space little later. Okay. Thank you. That is enough for today.